Thanks for joining us. Here it is, Crop Progress Tuesday, and we're watching your ag commodity trade today with keen interest. We have markets just kind of doing their own little thing here today. Let's dive into the corn market here first. And in the corn, of course, we had that uh, big surprise as far as the decline in ratings in some of the areas with the corn, especially in the western corn belt there. And the corn did respond. It was higher overnight. It was higher on the open this morning, but we're kind of fading a little bit. July corn up one and a half now at 3.30 and three quarters. And December new crop corn now too higher at 3.43 and a half. And uh, as we take a look at our soybean trade, soybeans kind of hitting the skids here. We have July soybeans down three at 8.66. And that is seven cents off of its early morning highs or overnight highs. And November new crop soybeans down two and a quarter at 8.73 and three quarters. Now the uh, soybeans basically overall were unchanged in uh, crop condition last week when you look at the good to excellent category nationwide. Now switching over to our wheat in Chicago wheat, we have July down five and a half cents. It's under $5 once again, and now we're at 4.99 and a quarter. Kansas City wheat has been getting fairly uh, hit fairly hard today. We have the July contract down eight and a half at 437 and a quarter. And in the Minneapolis market on the spring wheat trade, we're down two and a quarter cents on July. We're at 512 and three quarters, only one tick from our low of the day. Brian Hoops joins us now, and he is with Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. So first of all, on the corn market, it looks like we're kind of hanging in there, but uh, really off of our earlier highs from today, the enthusiasm seems to be uh, waning a little bit. Um, do you think it'll get its second win here by the time we get to the close? Well, we could get another uh, little push here, Marlon. I think, uh, you know, yesterday's news with Informa dropping corn acres pulled us off of the lows. And then the afternoon news about the crop progress conditions report with a big drop in uh, uh, especially Nebraska, but overall national conditions by 4% really caught the trade off guard. And that set off some technical buying. And, you know, certainly that could reemerge. But what's going to limit the advance of corn, I feel, is the fact that, um, you know, even if we were to use, lose a little bit of acres, lose a little bit of yield, um, we still are going to have an abundance of supply. You know, you know maybe 2.8, maybe 3 billion bushels instead of 3.45. Uh, really depends on yield for the rest of the summer. And, and the, with the forecast touting rain this week, cooler temperatures, there's very little reason to keep pushing this market higher unless those forecasts end up being a bust. Do you consider corn to be oversold? Uh, you know, we're, we're getting up into some weekly resistance this morning. We rallied to the third highest uh, price level since all the way back in mid-April. So I think you could say it's it's probably a little bit oversold. But uh, as we near this resistance, that's an opportunity for producers to uh, start executing some, some minimum price options at, at a bare minimum. Our, our seasonal highs are normally occur in this next week and so you're going to have to have you know real adverse weather after the fourth of july to push this market significantly higher how much trouble is this wheat market in with the big dive that we're seeing here today I, you know, I think it's kind of a normal pattern that we've seen. You know, we're we're seeing the the market react to harvest pressure, harvest presence, um, uh, pulling this wheat market down. We're probably going to go test some of those weekly resistance areas that we had uh, previously in uh, in Kansas City, the four. 59 area in the December contract, which is kind of where we're trading at now. Somewhere between there and 452 is where you should find some weekly chart support for this market. But until you get to 40, 50 percent harvested nationwide, it's hard to say that we've got any type of a bottom in the market. All right. Just wanted to check the dollar value here as well. And that's not helping the case for the wheat here today whatsoever. Uh, it looks like we have that September contract on the U.S. dollar index futures 470 points higher at 97.120. So keep that in mind. All right, Brian, we'll come back here in just a little bit and we will take a look at what's going on in our livestock trade. We had uh, some big sliding markets there, too, and a few contracts. And we'll figure out which ones when we come back. We're back with Brian Hoops. Let's take a look at our livestock trade. Let's begin with live cattle, shall we? Let's go to the big board in Chicago. Everything higher right now. And we have the August contract, 67 higher at 96.67. The June, remember, is in delivery. Uh, October now 92 higher at 
Okay, let's go check out the feeders. By the way, in that June contract on live cattle, they had no deliveries again this morning. Okay, August feeders up a dollar even at 132.17, and we have September a dollar 17 higher at 133.75. Uh, for the most part, it seems like we have most of the contracts a dollar or more on the uh, plus side here today. Then you get to the lean hogs, and ouch, you have July lean hogs down two dollars twenty cents at fifty oh seven, only one tick off our low of the day. In August, down a dollar ninety at fifty three thirty seven, and triple digit losses everywhere you look in the hog trade. What happened there, Brian? Yeah, a lot of selling coming in this market with cash hogs being down sharply, cutout values continuing to struggle, but. Boy, we're hitting some sell stops in this hog market today. Uh, as you said, triple-digit losses, just really seeing a lot of uh, funds piling into this market. We broke through some pretty key support in, like, that August contract, the July contract, all those months um, testing, probably getting close to testing contract lows, um, if not today, by the end of the week. Uh, when you look at the cattle, we actually have a cattle on feed report coming out the end of this week here. And it looks like we're starting to get some early estimates um, based on a survey done by the Wall Street Journal. And the early estimates for that cattle on feed report are looking at the on feed number to be about 99% of a year ago. Placements, 97.5%. That's the average guess, but a wide range, anywhere from 81 to 102%. Gee whiz. Um, marketing's at 73.8%. Uh, that is what the trade expects to see. So it looks like that placements number, once again, could well hold some surprises in there with a range that wide. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think it will. Our, our placement number is a little closer to 91 to 92 percent. So I don't know that we've placed that many cattle, but I guess we'll find out what the USDA says. And marking efforts will be interesting as well. You know, we, we've had a tough time getting bids from the Packers to, to try and market cattle in the last month, so we may not uh, reach that 78%. It may be closer to 73 to 75% as far as uh, that marketing number goes. All right. Well, thank you for all the time today. I appreciate that, Brian. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. We're just checking out the Dow. Up 426 points now. Back up above 26,000 at 26,231. Janet.